So Tommy, you only just turned 22 years old. You're in a swish pad like this in a nice part of Manchester. I mean, sometimes you must just blink and think, how have I got here? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's been a significant change, shall I say, uh, from the boiler room at home, because um, that's what I used to be in. Um, the room was no bigger than, I don't know, the kitchen. That was my room. Um, but no, at the end of the day, you know, work hard, work hard and uh, it pays off. And, you know, I've, I've definitely earned my right to be here because when I think about how much time I've put into this and how much dedication it's been, you know, I'm very grateful for what I have in life. And tell me what it was like growing up. I think you touched on it there. It sounds like it was quite a modest existence when you were growing up. Yeah, I mean, it was it was good. You know, I had a great upbringing. You know, um, you know, I was it was very happy with it. Um, I just, I just, it was very different. You know, going to school and stuff like that. I left school like a bit earlier than everybody else. I just knew that I was going to be different. You know, um, and I never was like spoiled as a child, rotten. You know, I never wanted for anything. But there's a difference between having that and then being spoiled. Um, and it just made you appreciate everything when you got it. So now when I get things, I, I really appreciate them. Like this here, I don't take it for granted, not one day. I wake up in the morning, I thank, the, I thank God every single day, you know, for what I have in life and um, for what I've achieved. And when you were growing up, I, I'm right in saying you didn't actually live on a site, did you? Ever? No, 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 we was in a house, yeah, we was in a house um, down in Salford, about 20 minutes away from here. Um, yeah, I lived there all my life. And... Growing up, we obviously got your you got your your brothers who are a little bit older than you. Um, how were they? Were they looking out for you as a kid? So we uh, we all used to train at um, a gym in Warrington, and that that was where it all first really started. You know, it was um, it was on a site. The gym was on a site. Um, we used to go there. We used to train every single day of the week, um, and it was good. You know, it was good memories, memories that I'll always keep with me um, because that's where I first started. Really, you know, knuckling down on boxing. That's where I learnt you know, the, the basics, um, and then it went from place to place to place. Yeah, I mean, obviously, being a Fury, you, you can't escape boxing, can you? You're, 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 it's with you from a very early age. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's with you all the time. You know, you can never get away from it. You know, everybody in our family's boxed, you know, right back to, I don't know, the ancient times. Um, but for us, you know, normal people will go around and kick a football on the field or, you know, I don't know, play a game of rugby. We just get the gloves on and have a fight and that's it. Um, and that's... You know, think about us, you know, fighting, we love it, it's in our blood and it's all we do. And what, what's your very first memory of boxing as a, like a very small child? Um, just seeing my dad in, a, in the garage really, you know, banging away on the bag um, and kind of opening the door and looking in and thinking, what's he doing in there? And then from that, it's, it sort of led for me going in there, maybe holding the time for him, just watching, you know, a few weeks of that. And then I always used to see him go running down the road, you know, quite a lot. Um, and then it went from me going on runs with him, you know, running by myself. And it just led from that, really, you know, just gradually. And then I was at a stage where, you know, being eight and nine, I used to go for a run, a three mile run, I used to come home. I used to go on the bag just like my dad, you know, I used to do exactly what he did. And then I went to the gyms and then it, it's, it's just all built up, you know, over time. And was it, did you ever feel like it was expected you to, it was expected that you should become a boxer? Was there any pressure for you to do that? No, nobody nobody ever told me, you know, right, you've got to do boxing, you've got to go to the gym, you've got to go and do your running. No one ever told me to do that. It was me, I'm all on my own back, you know. Uh, everyone, for a long time, used to just kind of overlook it. You know, I used to say, all right, I'm going out for a run now. Oh, I'm going to hit the bag for 30 minutes. It's like, all right, no problem. Like, nobody ever really, you know, took to it until I was a bit older. Um, but I always knew, I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. You know, I wasn't going to go around shouting it, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. I just did my own thing um, nice nice and quietly, worked away. And then when the time come, the time come. Yeah, because you had other interests. I, think, I know wrestling was a big thing for you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed wrestling. You know, I actually did it for a little bit. I did, I did a lot of things. I'm a very athletic, you know, sporty kid. Um, I did MMA for a little bit. I did wrestling, I did rugby. I, I used to do, be very good at rugby. I used to have a scholarship for that and everything, you know, but like I said, I did all these things, but there was only one thing that really mattered to me and that was boxing, you know. I never really wanted to do any of those things. Like, I've always done them, but in the back of my mind, I've always had boxing there. And what about Tyson? Because he's, what, 10 years older than you? Yeah. So he, he was obviously a, a, a lot more advanced stage with his boxing. Did you look at him and think, God, he, he, he's, he's going to be world champion one day? Yeah, 100%. You know, there's certain people that you just get that aura around. Um, and from an early age, he had it. Um, and you just knew watching him, you know, fight by fight, training session by training session, that he was going to do it. Um, and we all knew it, you know. And looking at him, especially me being so young, looking on, it was like, oh, that's where I want to be. That's what I want to do. So that was constant motivation for me. You know, everyone asked me, you know, how can you 
be an 18, 19 year old and not have a penny in your pocket and not and walk around with nothing, you know, no car, you know, no nice clothes, nothing. Because I wasn't getting paid for amateur boxing. I wasn't, get, I wasn't professional at that time. Um, so I had no money. I wasn't working. I was going to the gym three times a day. But I, I was said to myself, I'm happy having nothing, but I'm gaining something in another way. I knew I was gaining experience and, you know, learning my craft properly. You know, even if it, you know, even if it meant that I couldn't go out and do anything, I was fine with that because I knew that's what it took and that, that's what I had to do. And I remember saying you saying before as well, like from an early age, you were actually sparring the same people as Tyson. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we was in during Bolton. Um, I was around about you know, from fourteen to seventeen or something like that, fifteen to eighteen maybe. And Tyson sparring partners were always coming in, obviously big heavyweights. And at the time, there was no, you know, light heavyweights, middleweights in the gym. There was there was only heavyweights. So. You know, I had to get in there. You know, I couldn't say no. It was either coming at the bag all day or get or get in the ring and spar these big heavyweights. So obviously, I jumped straight in. Um, you know, nose first, straight in. Um, and I feel like that was the best way to go about it because them times really, you know, set me up for what I've been through already. You know, the tough spars, all that sort of stuff. And I was like 11 stone getting in the ring with six foot seven, six foot eight men who were about 19, 20 stone. And believe you now, many people not, might not believe it, but... It wasn't holding anything back. You know, my dad used to tell him every single time when you go in there, try and knock him out. So that was the sort of pressure I had to deal with. But having that from an early age stood me in good stead. So, you know, I wouldn't change a single thing. But having said that, I guess your dad, Tyson and Shane, you being the young one, they, have, they do look out for you. You're, you know, you're, you're, or when you were younger anyway, you're still like the baby of the family, if you like. I, I, in boxing, it was like, you know, I, I knew I was always going to get looked after because... You know, my dad's never, like I said before in the gym, you know, my dad's never going to do anything that's going to, you know, harm me or he's gonna, never going to put me in a bad position. So I, I knew that I was fine in that sense. So all it is and all it ever has been for me is just learning constantly because I never had to worry about, you know, getting overmatched or anything because I know I know my dad won't do that. So I can fully focus on boxing and not worry about a thing. And it's even to this day, it's, it's a true blessing that I don't have to worry about that. You know, I've got a great team around me, a, a team that looks out for me, you know, from down to you know, everything, you know, down to paying the bills. I've got an amazing team and I'm thankful every single day. And then aside from the boxing, as, as everyone knows, there was the Love Island. Could just, how, how did that actually come about? Yeah, so it was crazy, really. So I, I was getting, you know, into a point, I was going to the gym every single day. I was jumping on the train with money that I didn't have. I used to get on the train and not pay sometimes because I couldn't get there otherwise. So I was going to the gym like that and I kept on doing it for months on end and I was, it was hard times like very hard times, getting the bus in the freezing cold, it was snowing, it was raining, I used to be stood there with a jacket on and my gym bag at the bus stop, not getting paid for it at all. Um, and then one day, you know, it was coming up to my professional debut um, at Ricky Hatton's gym, and Ricky did an interview um, saying, you know, he doesn't look like you, or Tyson, he looks like he's just come off Love Island. And at the time, I didn't know what that was, because I'd never watched Love Island at all, I didn't know what it was. And then you know, like a week or two later, I got a call after training, you know, they called the office at the gym, and they come in the change room and said, ITV, you're on the phone, they want to speak to you. And I was like, okay, a bit odd. So then I, I, I got on the phone and he was like, oh, hi, Tommy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we'd love you, you know, we'd love to have you on board for 2019 series of Love Island if, you, if, you, if you'd like to. And I was like, that's very nice, thank you. Because I thought it was some game show or something <laughs> like that. I said, that's very nice, thank you very much. But I've got my professional fight, you know, debut coming up. I've got fights coming up, thank you very much, but no thanks. And then, cut a long story short, after my debut, I was my fights were penciled in and they got cancelled. So then I turned around to Ricky and I was like, well, what am I going to do now? And he's like, oh, just keep training, I guess. And I thought, right, well, I can do that. I can do that anyway if I've got nothing coming up. So I called him back and I said, you know, what's going on, right? What's, what, what's this actually about? And they said, okay, take a look at last year's season and give us a call back. So that's exactly what I'd done. I watched it. I thought, do you know what? Eight weeks in the sun, beautiful girls, <laughs> getting a tan. I can't go wrong. You know, I've got no fights coming up. So I thought, yeah, go on, I did it. So then I went down to London couple of auditions and then that was it I and mean, then the rest is history and I always say it's literally like a Cinderella story because I've gone from not having nothing to in the space of two years having you know in my eyes everything because I'm healthy I'm fit I've got to pay my own bills I have a roof over my head and that's everything to me you know I don't want the world um, and even now when I look back it's so crazy because you would never pictured that you know a young lad from Salford moving out you know living his dream and that's what I'm doing I'm training every day I'm boxing 
I'm fighting on great cards and I'm, you know, I'm just so blessed every single day when I think about it. It's like, oh, I don't even know how I've ended up here, but I have. And you met the love of your life, of course, as well. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's just, a, that's just the best thing of all. You know, I, met, I went on there, you know, very blind eyed to it all. Didn't know what was going on because uh, I'd never watched it before. And then to connect with a girl that, you know, is basically the female version of you, that's just, you know, it's crazy. You couldn't write what's happened in the past two years. You could not write it. But I'm going to take it all in. Uh, like I said before, I don't take it for granted because, you know, it can easy, it can come just as quick as you, as you got it, you know, so. Yeah, and, and just final question. It would have been easy for you to have sort of carried on with a Love Island spirit, falling out of cocktail bars every night and yeah. you know, just basically putting the box into one side but in fact you've done the opposite yeah that was never for me you know when I come out of Love Island it was it was a crazy experience you know everybody knew your name everyone wanted to take an autograph take a picture with you pull you from left to right fly you all over the globe give you crazy amounts of money for doing nothing in my eyes coming from the boxing game um, and I looked at myself you know I think it was two months after leaving Love Island you know, I was doing all these PAs you know getting paid every night to go to a club and do some pictures I thought to myself, you know, is this the life that I really want? You know, is this for me? Not really. It didn't really tickle my taste buds. Um, I thought, I don't want to be drinking every night and taking pictures and be washed up in two years. You know, I want to be a world champion. And that, I never took my eye off that goal. You know, all the way, all, all the way through Love Island, all the way through coming out, doing these PAs, doing whatever I was doing, the goal remained the same. So that's why when Frank said that he can get me out at the end of the year in the same year as Love Island, I took it like that. I cancelled, I think, 100 of my PAs that I was getting paid very good money for. I cancelled them and I was in the gym back training, back doing what I love because it was very important for me to finish that year, you know, how I started it. I finished the year boxing and I ended the year boxing and had the in-between of, you know, the celebrity lifestyle. Um, you know, it really was, it was a rock star's life. But again, like I say, it just wasn't for me. And the way I live now is just how I want to live. It's perfect. Yeah. And, and like you say, it's been a crazy two years and hopefully this is only the start. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, you know, most people that go on Love Island, that's them done. Like, they've accomplished everything they, they, they want in life. You know, they can take pictures of somebody. They've got a few followers on Instagram and they're getting a steady payment for whatever they're doing. But for me, you know, I've always strived to be the best in whatever I did. So Love Island, you know, it was a great thing. It's put me on a great platform. But the, in terms of goals, I'm nowhere near I want to be. You know, this is, this is, like you said, just the start of it. You know, by a town 27, 28, I want to be a world champion and... You know, be remembered. I want to go down in history. I don't want to be some guy who went on Love Island, you know, had a good few years run, got a bit of money and that was him. I want to accomplish my dreams and being a world champion, go down in history and then I can sit back in the rocking chair when I'm 80 years old and be like, do you know what? I had a great life. I set out what I, I achieved what I set out to do and that's it.